Hey guys, this is Melissa Zad for Into Boxing and I am delighted to be joined by none other than Big D, David Adelaide. How are you doing? Very well, how are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. Nice to see you here. Yeah, man, I mean, they called me up and said, Dave, let's do some commentary. You know, it's only right they got someone like me that's got the gift of the gab doing it, so <laughs> can't complain. Do you know what? Just before this interview, I was telling David Adelaide. I don't know why I decided to slow down your name like that. That's a good name. You can, you can say it like that if you want it, so right. <laughs> OK, I'll bear that one in <laughs> mind. Um, I was telling Big D that all my interviews since coming back from holiday have been really slow off the mark, and he promised that this is going to be a good one. So, stay tuned. I mean, I said no promises, but I mean, I'm going to try. <laughs> I can only be myself, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, man of many talents, you know, boxer by day, commentary dude on the TV by night. How did you find the commentary today? It's good, you know, just like talking boxing is easy. It's just like talking with your boys watching it at home. So, right, you know yeah. what I mean? I can talk about anything, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's all good. That's good. That's good. Is it the first time doing it? No, it's not. I've done it um, last year. Um, and now we're like, Dave, man, well done. You know, we liked it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Half the people tuned in just for me. Uh, shit was crazy. So they said, do you want to do it today? I was like, yeah, why not? So, yeah. It kind of makes sense, though. You know, obviously, you being a heavyweight, the headline uh, main event being a heavyweight boxer as well. Uh, so it does make sense, that kind of uh, connection there. What do you make of the main event? Obviously, you've got Joe Joyce facing Christian Hammer. What do you think of it? Um, good fight. Like I said, Christian Hammer is like a world-level gatekeeper um, so I think Josie's just got to go out there and kind of prove his worth and do a number on Christian Hammer um, doesn't seem to be a problem for Joyce I mean it looks like he's been there with tougher opposition so um, should should be a Joyce win tomorrow not to be um, contrary but I'm, I'm going to pull you up on something you said yeah do you really think that Joyce needs to prove his worth all right, cool. Let me let me go back on that. Let me retract on that. Not not prove his worth, but I think he's got to go out there and you know prove he's better than the. I mean, uh, I mean, I was gonna say prove he's better than the Frank Sanchez and whatnot, but then again, him stopping him doesn't really this or doesn't really say anything about Frank Sanchez, you know. Um, but he's just got to go out there and kind of he's like means a world level gatekeeper. He's gonna show why he's where he's at by stopping Christian Hammer and going out there and doing a number on him tomorrow. You know, the reason I say that is because I feel that uh, even though Joyce has had such a fantastic amateur pedigree, obviously being a silver um, Olympic medalist, he has often been overlooked in his career. Like, for example, when I was speaking to lots of boxing fans in the run-up to the fight with Daniel Dubois, a lot of people were like, yeah, Dubois is going to stop him. He's going to stop him in the first round. And obviously we saw how that went. Why do you think Joyce gets overlooked? I don't actually know. It's a good question. Maybe just the style of style of fighting you know um he definitely is he's a heavy hitter we can see that you know um he's not one of them people that has just you know one punch power is gonna you know knock you out with one power but he's gonna i mean once accumulated power and he's not putting his punches together he's definitely gonna get people out and then it shows but um i suppose you can't really go with what people say when they're you know watching from afar because it doesn't really mean nothing, you know, he's ranked where he's ranked in sort of all the governing bodies for a reason and that's what he's got to focus on, you know, the people that really matter and um, it's their opinion that kind of matters because they're the ones that's going to allow them to get to certain title shots. 100%. I mean, we were expecting to see a fight between Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker, um, but Joyce is coming off an injury, he's also coming off a year of activity. Do you think that this is a better fight for him at this stage? Maybe so, you know. Um, you know, like they say, inactivity is a killer got to stay active in this game so um, him you know getting this Christian Hammer fight may be better for him and then maybe he can fight Parker later on in the year I mean it all depends on how it works with their contracts and whatnot obviously he's with a different broadcaster now Parker so it depends. So speaking of the heavyweight division of which you're a part of um, we've got you know the long anticipated rematch between uh, Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua coming up in August in Saudi Arabia what is your predictions for that? God willing, Joshua does a number on him. Um, don't actually know, though, of course. I think, yeah, no, I think Joshua can stop him, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, Joshua catches him and stops letting his hands go. Um, he's going to get Usyk out of there, so I think he can actually stop him. Where do you think he went wrong in the first fight? Came in too light and tried to box him. You know, um, Usyk had, what, three, four hundred amateur fights. Being there, done it all, boxed that super heavyweight. He boxed Joe Joyce that super heavyweight. So, um, yeah, going out there to kind of box him wasn't really... 
you know, his, his smartest idea. He should have just went out there and used his attributes. You know, he's physically bigger than him, he's stronger than him. Just got to use what you know, you know, use your advantage you know you've got on him. I mean, arguably, he tried to outbox, you know, one of the tacticians of boxing, right? Like, Usyk is a fantastic boxer. So, um, you know, debatably, Derek Chisora's fight against Usyk actually put more pressure on Usyk than Joshua's fight with him did. Um, but you feel that Anthony Joshua can stop him. Do you feel that the addition of Robert Garcia to his team will have something to do with that? I mean, it can only be a positive. I don't really see it being a negative. You know, when you add people to your team and it's more brains, you know, so it's just only going to be a more positive factor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it can actually work in his favour, definitely. When can we expect to see you back out? In the summer. I was meant to be fighting, of course, on this show tomorrow. I had a small niggle, you know, a little injury, but it's things happen, you know, in a tough sport, so these injuries all are bound to happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll be out there in the summer. And how many fights have you had currently? Nine. You didn't even know that, did you? I didn't. Wow. <laughs> she said, how many fights you had currently? <laughs> she didn't even know that, bro. Well, isn't it better that I'm honest about it rather no, than true. no, rather yeah, than try to? Honest, I would have, I would have asked you a few questions, you know, and I would have just, I would have found out. So, it's better you so this will be your tenth fight. My tenth fight. Right? Let's pretend that I knew that this will be your tenth fight. Yeah. Two digits now. It's big. It is. It is. I'm climbing up the ladder, and I'm getting there slowly but surely. You know, I'm just tripping away at the blocks, and I'm getting getting to where I need to get to. I feel like you've said that before. Climbing up the ladder, I've been chipping away at the block. You know, it feels quite like you've said that a few times. No, it's just what it is, though. I mean, what, when I'm on level, I ain't going to be saying it. I'm just going to be yeah, saying the same old, I'm here now. Yeah, yeah. Ha ha. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Get used to me. And then they're going to keep interviewing. I'm going to say, I'm here now. Ha ha. Get used to me. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to be the same old cliche stuff. So right now I'm here. And then when I get there, I'm going to be doing the same stuff. And when I get there, I'm going to be doing the same stuff. So they got to get used to me. You know what I mean? Uh huh. <laughs> I like it. Um, have you found that as you have progressed through the ten fights, the nine fights coming on to your ten? No, you be getting it wrong, you know, bro. <laughs> you hear me, this Chris? Wow, man. Do you feel that the level has changed, and have you noticed that level change, and how has that impacted your performance? Yeah, the level has changed. You know, um, there's certain fighters that we look at now. You know, um, like I say, it's like the last opponent we didn't want him. He said, no, we don't want him. He was the last opponent. He's the only person that could have like, really accepted the fight and whatnot. Um, we want for some certain fighters. They all seem to be saying they want certain fights, and then when they get offered it, behind closed doors, they don't take it. So it was a bit weird for me. As someone, I don't know. Um, Chris Healy took it, but like, now we're looking at different sort of fighters. You know, um, Like who? I can't say it. I don't know are you sure? In trouble, so. <laughs> but some real good fighters um, that, you know, that are ranked high and that are good tests, you know, and I'm... Um, I back myself all the way, man. I'm, I believe in myself. You know, when I start letting my hands go, everyone's in trouble. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get used to fighting in the pros now. Whereas before, it was a lot more amateurish style. You know, it was three rounds, fast pace, and doing certain things. Now I'm kind of learning how to get used to doing it. You know, in the pro level, with, pace with pace myself with people there, and you know, um, it's all good. It's all good. What uh, can you name three names? Yeah, just three. You don't have to say who you're targeting or whatever, but three other heavyweights that you would like to share the ring with. What, as in now, in future? Whatever you like. So maybe we can do one that you'd like to face now ish, one that you'd like to face in the next six months to a year, and one that you'd like to face in the future. One I'd like to face now, I'd say Lucas Brown. Um, six months, I'd say, Christian Hammer. And in the future, you know, I'd love a fight with someone like the Deontay Wilders. You know, when it's just exciting, I'll just charge at him the same way Fury did, just put it on him from the jump. <laughs> it is what it is mentality. I think a lot of people ain't got it. One thing that Timothy Bradley said to me was, a lot of heavyweights have the smallest hearts, and it's the truth. A lot of these guys don't have no bottle. And I say it, I mean, my coach says it to me time and time again, and we see it behind closed doors. Really start to see it. A lot of people don't really have the bottle for it, you know. Um, Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because they've relied on their power for so long to kind of. Power and size. And when they meet, when they meet their match, it's like, whoa. You know, um, a lot of people do have the whole course, but a lot of people don't. Often more people don't have it. 
you know, and um, something you can't change. A lot of people will be thinking, oh, I'm tough. No, it's something you can't change. It's as simple as that. Have you got it or you don't? You can't teach heart, as they say. You can't teach heart. That's the one thing that's, that you're born with and is given to you. So the big question is, and I think I know the answer, but I've got to ask it anyway. David Adelaide, do you have heart? Ox. You ox anyone. <laughs> in the streets, in boxing, it don't matter. Trust me. Do the resume check and over I got heart. Trust my heart beats fear for no man. Trust me. I love it. Yeah, I ain't even playing when I say that. My heart beats, what was it? My heart fear. For no man. My no heart man. beats fear for no man. I ain't lying. Uh huh. <laughs> I ain't lying, for real. Yeah. David, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you, thank you. And um, like I said, well, what was it? We're chipping away, we're getting there. Chipping and, away at the block. Uh huh. <laughs> and then when we get to the world level, we're going to say we're here now. Uh huh. So it's all good, it's all good. Thank so, you. Pleasure.